All right, this is uh, part two of lesson 21 for seventh grade, and we were about to show you how to get the prime factorization of any number. All right, so the best method, and I'm only going to show you the best method, at least in my opinion, the best method for finding a prime factorization is to use a factor tree. So factor trees, I'm sure we've seen before. Um, we take, let's take 30 here. What we're going to do with 30 is we're going to break it down into things that we know that we multiply to get 30. So for instance, I know that 30 is 5 times 6. Okay. Now the thing is, is we're going to stop once we get a prime number. So if we look at 5 and 6 here, um, I know 5 is a prime number. I'm going to go ahead and circle that because I need to know that I need to come back to it. So 5 is done. Once you get a prime number, you're done on that track. However, 6 is a composite number and it can be broken down further into 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. Um, and now we look and see if we can break down 2 and 3 anymore. We actually can't because 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. So circle those. Alright. So how do we write prime factorization of 30? Well, 2 times 3 times 5. So for A, that would be the prime factorization of 30. And if you went ahead and did this, you could go 2 times 3 would be 6, times 5 would be 30. You could skip around if you wanted. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, times 3, 30. 3 times 5 is 15, times 2, 30. doesn't matter which order you do it. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is when you write the prime factorization, you want to start for, with your smallest prime number and go up to your largest prime number. So they're all going to follow in order. So you always want to start with twos if you have them. Okay. Let's look at 81. 81, that's actually a perfect uh, square number. So we know 9 times 9 is 81. And 9 and 9 are not prime. But they can be broken down into 3 and 3. 3 and 3. And threes, those are primes, so I'll circle all those. Looks like that's an easy one. We've got three times three times three times three. So we're gonna write that as three to the fourth power. Because remember that three to the fourth power means you're multiplying four threes all together. That would be the 81. All right, fourth one, all right. Here's a good way to do anything that ends in a zero. Anything that ends in a zero, you know, can be divided by 10. So this is actually, can be written as 42 times 10. All right. Now we gotta break down 42. I know that six times seven is 42. Seven's a prime. Six is not a prime. But two and three are. So remember, two times three gives you six. All right, so we've got, on this side, all of our primes are we're done, okay? But now we've got to go to 10. I know that 10 is two times five. All right. So there we go, two and five are primes, so we're done there. So I know that, um, well, first thing you want to do, you want to start with twos if we have them, or the lowest prime number. I've got one, two, two twos. So I've got two twos, which we'll write as two to the second, because we had two of them. And then I have a three, so times three, times five, times seven. So that one's a bit more lengthy for four, 420. But yes, this is how we would write the prime factorization of that. Prime factorization of 100 and the square root of 100. Okay, let's do this one quickly. 100 and square root of 100, which we know equals 10. Square root of 100 is 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. We'll do this one first. Break that down. 2 times 5. So, uh, 
prime factorization of 10, these are both prime, is actually just 2 times 5. So that one was easy. Uh, 100. I know that can be broken down into 10 times 10. And those are not prime, but they can be broken down into 2 and 5. 2 times 5 gives you 10. So we've got two twos and two fives. So this one would be 2 to the second times 5 to the second. If you think about that, that makes sense. 2 to the second is 4. 5 to the second is 25. 4 times 25 gets you to 100. All right. Okay. And our last thing here. Uh, we can actually use prime factorization to help us find the greatest common factor, or the GCF as we call it, of two or more numbers. So your first step, uh, list the prime factors for each number, and then identify the shared ones, so whatever they have in common, and then whatever they have in common, multiply together. And we're gonna show that with this example here. So it says, write the prime factorization of 36 and 60, okay? So we'll do 36 first. I'm gonna go through it quickly. Six times six, two times three, two times three. All right, I'm not going to write the factorization like it told me, and I'll show you why. Uh, 60 is 6 times 10. 6 is 2 times 3. This is 2 times 5. And all those are prime. So we're going to look at what they have in common. Well, they have 1, 2 in common. Looks like they have another 2 in common. And 1, 3 in common. So they have two twos and a three. So the GCF, or the greatest common factor, that's what would divide both of them. The greatest number that would divide both of them um, is two times two times three. So this has its own prime factorization. This has its own prime factorization. This would be the GCF. Greatest common factor equals 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3, which is 12. So, that's the greatest number that will divide both of them evenly. And that is true. 36 divided by 12 is 3. 60 divided by 12 is 5. And that's how we use that uh, for the GCF. Alright, that's the last thing that I had. We're going to be working on this tomorrow, so we'll see you then.